Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. So in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and move along with our assembly of the funnels. And what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to install all the little photo etch detail that comes with the Pontos, or correction, that comes with the KA kit. Uh, it's actually not incorrect to say Pontos 2 because basically they're identical. Uh, also, if you buy similar hardware from Woody's Model Works, I believe you're getting essentially the same thing. So generally speaking, these rules will apply to you and work. And so we're going to go ahead and show how to install that. We're going to take a look at the whistles. There's several options for whistles, uh, a new product from K Paints that I use. And then we'll show you a couple little gotchas that I ran into that we'll address in the upcoming videos with the detail work. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the four funnels on so you could take a look at that. And uh, that's, that's about it. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, let's get into the build. All right, folks, here we are back with our funnels. This is funnel number one. This is the KAA, or I'm sorry, this is the China 3D print uh, funnel that we painted last time. So uh, let's, let's talk about something here, and I'm going to try and get in close so you can see what I'm exactly getting at. All right, so here's our paint job, and we, we did the whole thing black. We masked the black off, and then we painted down to this rim right here. Uh, you are... Uh, this rim is supposed to be black. It's actually supposed to be tan up to the bottom side of this, but because it's raised, it's very difficult to mask. So I do recommend doing it in the order that, that I did if you're going to do this, is do the flat black on top. And in this case, uh, client's choice, the British sand, uh, this color on the bottom, and get your colors that you're happy with so you're, that you're that at this point. Okay, and then we've got all the detail that I mentioned we need to add up on top here from our uh, KA kit. So, order of operations, black, tan, mask to here, paint up, remove the mask, you're set. Next thing we're going to do is mask from here down to cover up our sand. Okay, sorry, there was some operator error there. Uh, I thought I hit record. Uh, we're going to mask down, and I, I went ahead and put this uh, piece of tape on here. We're going to mask right up to the bottom side of this little bump and wrap around. I ended up just a hair short here on the front. So just grab another piece of tape and continue your line around. This is uh, one quarter inch thick Tamiya. And we'll just tuck it right in, get right up to that corner. Let it touch here. And carefully go around the whistles. Uh, a, a lot of this area right in here is going to end up getting touched up uh, with a brush afterwards, but we'd like to try to minimize how much of that we have to do, like so. Let me adjust this. Sometimes when the tape doesn't lay right, you could just shove it way out of the way because you know this part right here is good, or you could just cut it off. Okay, now uh, we want to mask the rest, the rest of this off very carefully with... Uh, the thicker heavy duty tape as we knock everything down all over the place. The thicker stuff. All right, starting, I like to start in the middle, come around, soft turn over the pipe, connect it at the top there so we don't get any bleed, come around, tuck it into the pipe. Let it come over. I'm going to tuck it back into the pipe. Like that. And you meet up. Okay, and then we're going to keep going down. We're going to be careful not to snap this piece off, but carefully mask around it as well uh, to provide it with a little protection during handling. Okay, it's all masked up. Uh, masked, right? So now let's go to our instructions. Okay, so this is our area of operation today. Uh, and what you're going to need are basically assembly parts for A, B, and B. That's it. We'll worry about this stuff over here later. Uh, so looking at this, you're going to need photo etch sheets L, M, and N to accomplish all of these little parts that we've got here. And you're going to need to identify your ladder. You can use the uh, KA ladder or the kit ladder. I grabbed the kit ladders just because they're nice and robust and easy to work with. KA also has them. So in case something goes sideways, um, I've got a backup ladder. 
But what we're gonna do is go ahead and start up here at the top. The reason we're starting at the top is it's easier to handle everything and work our way down. And so this is your little subassembly. November 23, that flat plate, then November 24 hits in perpendicularly. And then you've got your uh, little pulley rigging system, November 26, that we're gonna install. And these things go up on top, there's five of them per side. Uh, the reason they were there, there was actually only, as far as I could tell, planned standing rigging for this one and this one, uh, just so there was something, a line running up there. Uh, what they would do is run ropes around this so that the painters could pull themselves up and work on the side of the funnel and get everything painted. Uh, these hooks down here are actually for the guide wires, these rigging lines that you've got, uh, to hold the thing in place. But we want to put the top ones on first, and then the bottom ones and paint. So this is really easy. We'll start out with November 23, then 24, and then 26. So let's go ahead and press on. Okay, so uh, uh, hopefully you can see this zoomed in here. There's a bump right here, right here, right here, and right here, and little fittings go there. So I have chosen to utilize the first five, starting from the uh, forward part of the funnel back, directly up as my reference point for placing these hooks that go on top right here. So what I do is, here's the first one, it's just inside this rivet point. I'm going to go ahead and drop a little speck of CA glue right there, get my tweezers, grab my piece, Drop into position, make sure the line's going up and down, give it a little tap. You got a second there. There we go. Like that, and leave it in place. And then we'll go on down to the next one, which you can see is right here. So we'll apply our CA glue just to the left side of that line, like this. Doesn't need to be super heavy duty, it just needs to be there. Okay, like that. And we'll just go ahead and knock out the other three. Okay, so uh, by put on the other three, I meant the other five all or uh, seven because you gotta put them on the other side as well. It's important to remember here, why are there only five? You know, this thing sits like this and if you had a hook here, you would hang straight down and you'd be wobbling out in the wind over here and you'd never reach this area. So that's, that's why they don't go all the way back. All right, now we need to put the little horizontal pieces on. It's the little ring, this part. I just go ahead and drop it in some CA glue and then bring it up here and put it in the little slot. Try and make sure it's perpendicular to the piece, like so, and then you're all set. Uh, this is challenging because you do have to get a solid CA connection or you'll have trouble later on. You're also looking to use, you don't want to use too much CA glue, otherwise it glops up and doesn't look good. So anyway, that's, that's what you're looking to do, that's how they're installed. Let me go ahead and knock out the remaining eight. Okay, now things are going to get interesting. So you have this final piece here, this little hook, uh, N26, November 26. I, I skipped the part where I show folding it in half because you gotta fold in half. It's a very time consuming compared to the rest of this, but it's important because it gives this CA glue an opportunity uh, to set up. These are meant to hang. So what I do is they're split. I just give them a little dip in CA glue and then very carefully slide it up into where it goes. And now the important part is that you make a little adjustment because it's being held there by CA glue to make it look like it's hanging straight up and down as best as you can. And then that's what you're left with, a little little piece like that. So um, this one's split a little bit further apart. Well, if you can make that out, there's a split. So I just dip this end in my little pile of CA glue that I have let, it's medium CA glue, and I've let it gel up a little bit that helps things and then very carefully put it into position 
and make sure it's hanging right. You get a second or two there to sort that all out and it sets up and then there you go. So that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll, knock, I'll knock that out for the whole thing here. All right, here, here are the little you know hooks hanging in there. We'll we'll get a good look at them in a minute. Um, the next thing we are going to try and do here is put the hooks on that go down here. So, oh man, try and get that focus to work right. We're zoomed way in. You can see there's a little bump here. There's a little bump here, and the little piece, uh, November thirty one goes there, you get a ton of these. Now, according to the pictures, it would appear that they want you to turn it um, perpendicular and attach it straight on, I think. That's not what I'm doing with this, and we're gonna make it work. So what I'm gonna do very carefully is the top, see that little T-shaped area there? So you can see it in the black, the little double spot. I'm gonna set that in some CA glue. The trick is not to use too much. And then I'm going to go to one of those little bumps and I'm just going to set it down. Hopefully I use enough glue. There we go. Just like that. Now the key is, so this is going to have rigging attached to it. It would be nice to put a little more CA glue on top of this to really lock it into position so you can, you know, pull on it, I guess it would be the word. The issue is if you do that, you risk putting a big hump of CA glue there and then it looks funny when you put the black paint on. So you just want to make sure you got enough CA glue that this will sit in a position and then when we apply our enamel paint to it, it will dry hard because we're going to let this sit a long time and really lock it in. Now in case someone's like, oh Ben, you got it going the wrong way. The rigging that goes and attaches to this has a slit in it, just like the previous piece. It's kind of like the ends of these um, tweezers. I'm going to turn it like this and slide it up in, and I actually think it's going to look more to scale uh, than what we've got right here. And there are six of these. Uh, they go all the way around. So I'm just grabbing another one. I'm dragging it through my CA glue. I might need to freshen it up here. And we'll go to the next spot. Some little crummy bump of something sitting there. Make sure your CA glue is fresh. That will help with uh, this whole process. And then they end up going on like that. So I think, I think they look better this way because you can't really see them. When you turn them sideways, uh, they stick out and look big and out of scale and kind of honky. Uh, so. Yeah, we're going to do that. So anyway, we've got six of them per side to put on. Let me go ahead and knock those out, and then we'll come back and look at it. All right, so uh, there's all of our hardware installed, and it's had a minute to set up here and dry. So now it's just time to go ahead and paint it, and the goal is going to be to lock these in place and then get that, um, you can see that color right down here, the sand color. Uh, painted black as well and so just get your flat black ready in the airbrush and get right back into action here and uh, get everything all painted up and notice that I'm starting out on the bottom spraying up because you do want to get all sides painted it will help lock the brass in. And then I go ahead and just give it another little kind of filler coat to even out any scratches and give it a nice tone. So the tops of this ring that we just put in place, it's important that not only do we get the paint on for color purposes, but so that we can lock in that photo etch with the enamel paint. It'll help us down the road. Okay, uh, that looks good. It's black, so let's just let that sit for just a minute here, and then we'll go ahead and uh, take the masking tape off. Pressing on. All right, everything's black. Uh, the 
paint is kind of wet still. And so at this point though, I'm, I want to carefully remove all of my tape. And I want to do it sooner rather than later. And I'm glad I masked it. Uh, the reason is the paint that I used, uh, the Mission Models, uh, was it British Sand, it has a tendency to soak up oil from your skins, which is a good reason to mask it off. And it, depending on how long it's cured for prior to you masking it, I would let it cure longer rather than shorter. Uh, you may find, may, and I'm doing this part very carefully here because we've got our little pipe. You may find that um, some of the tape uh, adhesives stuck a little bit to um, the little paint areas. And so far what I'm seeing is that hasn't happened. I did have a little bit of trouble with that before. So, and it's not a big deal. You know, you just got to come back and with your airbrush and very carefully touch it all up, right? But we're trying to minimize how many times we mask and how many times we uh, have overspray and all that kind of stuff. So I've just given you a heads up there that that could happen. And, you know, you can wear gloves, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do. Just letting you know, don't be surprised if you take it off. And it actually looks kind of cool because then what happens is this area in the middle is a little bit naturally weathered and your rivets are raised with a lighter color. Um, I would consider that maybe for my model. Uh, my client, that's absolutely not what he is interested in, so we're not doing that. But I just want to leave you a heads up in case you use this paint and you run into that scenario. It looks like we might have a little bit of a dark spot right here, maybe. I'll touch that up with a little bit of uh, paint out of the airbrush. It'll fix everything we want. So, let's see here. And then try and take the masking off in the order that you put it on. All right, here's our new line. Almost. Remember, we put this tape on first. Just come straight across. And there you go. So we got a little bit of black right back here. We'll, we'll touch that up with a brush. It's just easier. And come out. And there you have it. Okay. Got a nice look of funnel. Uh, we're ready to do the next step. And the next step's super easy. Leave it alone. Uh, just just let it set. In fact, okay, actually, it's, it's, this isn't a great example, but and it's, it's a lot of the lighting. But if you can see, it's kind of darker a little bit right there. Some of that's just shadows from the lighting. That's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, if I tip it, it disappears. So it's, it's not there on this one. But anyway, if you have that, you could go ahead and touch it up is what I'm getting at. And it's, it's not a big deal. It's time to let this sit though. I want, I want this paint to cure and solidify um, so that we can go on to the next step because we got to address our whistles and we've got a little stand and everything here and photo etch and we've got a ladder that goes on and so there's a lot of handling left to do with this piece. So uh, just, just put it down for uh, a day or two or whatever you think is appropriate. Even just a couple hours is fine. All right, uh, pressing on. Okay, so uh, it's been a day or whatever, and the paint's dried up for the most part, and yeah, I mean, this is it, right? Okay, so I'm going to turn it sideways here. We've got, oh man, I don't know. We want to paint the whistles next, or at least I do, That's and they're black right now up on top right here. Uh, I wanted to talk about briefly some of the options you had. So these whistles obviously are 3D printed, and they are on... Uh, the funnel itself and ready to go, which is really nice. But there are some other options. So what do we have here? We have money. Yeah. All right. So what's really cool, the China 3D printed parts come with spare whistles right here. Uh, I guess if you somehow accidentally knock yours off or if it's easier for you to cut the one off 
that's on already pre-molded, then you could go ahead and, and cut out one from here and paint it all up nicely and put it back on at your leisure. I think that's a pretty good idea. Uh, what we have down here, this is the kit whistle. This is the stock whistle that you get um, with the ship. And other than this big part right down here for it to be glued on, it's, it's really not too bad, I don't think. Uh, these got these big nubs on the top that maybe aren't so accurate. You could just sand them down a little bit, no big deal. Then we've got uh, this little arrangement right here, and I apologize, it's upside down. This is from uh, Props and Drops. They're on Facebook, the 1200 Titanic page. Um, Gene Davis is your guy there. He had several runs of all brass whistles. You get four, and I've, I've gone ahead here and, and cut one of them out. Um, a survey was done. Do you want like an antique brass? I believe a survey was done. Antique brass or the, or the full-on glossy brass. And I think that was the consensus was go with the, the glossy brass. Uh, is what people wanted and it looks really good it's a little it has the slightest slightest radius to it which is understand it's very difficult with a cast part to get these things perfectly straight and for having actual brass whistles that are all fancy like this once they're on the ship you're not going to notice the slight curve um, these are a very nice addition if this is something that you that you actually want so those are those are the options that you have right there. Uh, for ours, uh, my client's build here, we're going to go ahead and just paint the whistle uh, right on here. But I am going to use something different. I'm going to use this product uh, from AK, True Metal. And this is brass. Now, this is unique. Uh, I talked to my local hobby guy about it. He He's like, you got to try this. It's amazing. It's, it's an oil-based paint, I believe but it's got colored wax added, specifically designed here, it says for modeling. It can be applied with a brush and polish it to get an ultra realistic finish. With true metal, you can reproduce all kinds of metal finishes, steel, copper, gold, aluminum, etc. cetera. Uh, and you, know, you unscrew it and you've got this tiny little dab. And I mean, this is gonna last me approximately 300 years if I'm just using it for painting uh, whistles and I got the brass color. Uh, it goes on very nicely with a brush. I'll show that here. And if you have brush marks left on your finish, it's because you left brush marks on your finish. It will set up really nicely. Uh, these are so little with what we're doing, we're not gonna polish it. But I was told that if you let it dry a couple days, you could come back with like a cloth or a um, Q-tip or something and, and rub it and, and put a little buff on the metal which is pretty awesome so let's go ahead and paint that we'll we'll put this on our uh, whistle right now all right so i just get a little on my brush and as you can see it's it's very thick and kind of pasty i guess is the is the word and I just kind of get it on and keep working it around. Um, until you get the look that you want. And the look that we want is a nice smooth even application. Get some more in the back here. So, oh man, I'm gonna try and show this here. If you get it on and then you start dragging your brush on, and use a nice high quality brush for this, you'll have better luck. You could keep kind of massaging it here until all the brush strokes literally just disappear. And it ends up looking really nice. I think you guys get the idea here. So let me go ahead and, because this is hard to do on camera and keep it focused, let me go ahead and continue applying that until we're done. Okay, so there's our whistle. Now we're going to do something hard. Get your photo etch for this bracket, fold it up, and drop it in. And let's zoom out here a little bit. I've got this little styrofoam arrangement. Uh, to hold 
my funnel for me facing up and the reason is gravity helps hold my photo etch piece down so that uh, I could set it on there and, and not have any trouble well so I can have less trouble so this is how I prefer to do this uh, and it and then it stays in position um, and you can go ahead and put some uh, CA glue on here if you need to so anyway that's how we drop that on I use this bracket and the next thing we gotta do is assemble the ladder all right press on okay uh, so Sorry, cutting from the last segment to this segment. I threw the railing up on here. It's, I cover. I have a video two videos ago called How to Install Railing, so I'm not going to repeat all that here. It's just two pieces. The next hard part, though, is you have to install this ladder. And uh, I've had as much trouble with this as I think everyone else has. It's, it's, it's not fun. So here's my piece. I'm using the stock kit piece because the photo etch is nice and heavy and it's easier to work with. Uh, there's three segments of arms. I went ahead and cut off this top one. And then as far as getting this curve goes here, I eyeballed it and I just used a pencil and kind of worked my way around. So what I like to do is pre-fold it and just kind of drop it in a position here and figure out what is going on. Um, I also like to take the ladder and pick a rung so this this ladder keeps like going up pick a rung that lines up with the bottom of the stand right here as a reference point to get my height right down here at the bottom and this involves a lot of dry fitting and just you know turning this thing and making sure that it's straight and trying to determine do i have the look that i want that's right for the kit. Do I have these things at the right angle? Is it going to drop in a position? Do I need to bend something else, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, now the ladders do follow the profile of the funnel, or they're supposed to. And then at the bottom here, it it kind of tips down and in. And this one's a little long, which is fine. You could go ahead and cut it off to make sure that it works. But what I'm getting at is use this time to adjust these little legs these little supports the more you pinch them in the more you raise your ladder up off of the funnel and you want it parallel to the funnel but ideally you want everything to touch and work out etc and go where it's supposed to go so that's that's what i do here um to, to make this work and you just you're just going to take your time whoops i knocked it off the other thing you do take this opportunity to work out that that curve up at the top here i've had it i've had it where you could you could get this nice and parallel and it sits where you want but then your curve pieces don't end up actually making contact with the top of the funnel and then you got to bend them carefully while they're in place and it can turn into a headache really really fast Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this uh, placement right here. I'm having a little bit of trouble on the port side with this uh, piping that's installed. It's kind of touching where our, my stands want to contact. Um, that's okay. We, we can work that all out. But what do I do to make this all work really is the, is the main question here. So first of all, I'm noticing that the whole thing I think needs to shift down. because I want this rail to curve up and end up about halfway on this whistle right here, which means I have an excess at the bottom that I'm gonna have to trim appropriately, and that's fine. So once I think I've got my spot right, what I'm looking to do here is count down. We've got one, two, three, four rails. This fourth rail lines up exactly with the stand that one would sit on and what I have to do is decide am I going to commit to that spot and if I like it what I'll do is I will put CA glue on this point and glue down the ladder right here first and anchor it and that's a good solid contact you also have 
the railing edges right here that you could connect to as well and then worry about these fine points later. So I, I'm liking that look and the angle and I think that's what I'm gonna, gonna do here is, is glue the fourth one down, one, two, three, four, right into position and then we'll work the rest of this out. So let's, let's make that happen real quick. Three, four, I've got a little glue on the side there and we've got pretty good contact. So now uh, I'm going to take a little bit more CA glue and my stuff's getting a little thick and I'm going to drag it along this edge right here. Just kind of bring these railings together. The little stanchion and then the arm of the ladder. And let that set up. So now we've got this really, I, I know this is upside down from the way you guys are looking at it. We've got this really uh, kind of robust contact point. I'm going to let that set up because then it allows me to come back here and monkey with the side stanchions. Like this one's a little crooked. I need to figure out where I'm going to have it land and turn all this stuff. So uh, that's, that's how I do this. And then you can see it's pretty parallel to everything. And then we've got this little bend down here at the bottom and I've got to cut the excess off so it, it stands up on the ground the way that um, we want. All right, that's, I'm gonna do that off camera and wrap this up. You guys get an idea of how that goes. Then we'll just come back and all you gotta do is paint it. You can use a brush or an airbrush or whatever you want. I use a combination of the two to touch all this up and make it match. All right, pressing on. Okay, so here we are. Uh, it's time to install our funnel. And I'm gonna go ahead and start glopping some glue on here. This is the uh, E6000 clear transparent stuff that I really like. Um, so because I had put some slop in the bottom of the funnel to get to fit over this space here, I need to kind of fill a gap. And I want it to um, grab onto this stuff and I want to put a little CA glue down just to help it hold in place. So wh why did I go with this E6000 in addition to, like I just said, filling up the gap and making it reach? This stuff dries uh, just a little bit rubbery. It's got a little flex to it when it sets up. This thing is getting shipped uh, across the country. And I want it to absorb a little bit of banging around is, is the bottom line. And I want it to be able to take a little bit of movement with it here. So that's what we're going to do to make sure that it works. And I, I like the results because it, it, it takes 24 hours to fully cure, but it grabs right away. And this stuff, E6000 comes in little small containers. You can get it too. I've got some little ones. Uh, I recommend that you have this around the house for around the house stuff not just model building. It, it's, it's a good glue to have for other things. I had a, I had a pair of shoes that, uh, and this is CA glue, regular CA glue I'm using just to tack things in place right away. But I had a pair of shoes that came apart, the little rubber sole, and I went ahead and used the 6000 on it. And uh, those shoes are perfect. They're like they're brand new. I was really impressed with how well everything worked out. Okay, now we're in place here, and it looks good. We got our angle right here. That's it. That should work. It's glued on. Uh, all right, let me. Adjust a couple things and we'll get a different camera shot, talk about a few items. Okay, so here we are, zoom back out. This is the funnel uh, number one installed in all of its glory. And so I think what's important to note is you're going to have to do this three more times. And when you do and you get them all installed, it ends up looking like this. It's pretty awesome. So. Uh, now that that's done, the plan is, I guess I'll walk over here, is to go ahead and install all of the little details. What I wanted to do is get these funnels in so that I'm not trying to carefully snake them down in between railing and 
fine detail and all that kind of stuff. So they're in here, we're good to go. This will allow me the ability to go ahead and take the little detail parts, stack them in, get the railing in. Uh, then we'll probably do the rigging or I'll get the lifeboats in first and then we'll do the rigging. We're gonna focus on the center of the ship. Once that's done, then I'll go ahead and get the masts up and then we can work on the poop deck and forecastle, and they will uh, get all wrapped up. So that is the plan. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and look at a couple of final details that you need to be made aware of because there are uh, two areas that I was like, well, what, what happened here exactly? Okay, over here on the starboard side, funnel number one, we have this little uh, pipe that's molded onto the 3D printed part very nicely, looks fantastic. Uh, what is it supposed to attach to? Well, it's supposed to go to a water tank. Now, in the kit part, you don't get the water tank. Uh, there's nothing there. But you do get this really cool 3D printed part from KA, which my client uh, is using. And it has a hole in the top of it there for a pipe to go into. That hole is for the kit supplied pipe. Uh, An inaccuracy in this part, looks like they've got these details, right, these pipes. These two pipes on this end did not exist, so we'll go ahead and I'll remove those when I install it. The thing is, it's supposed to go into place like that. And I think you can see from there, actually it looks pretty good, but if we zoom in all the way and we move over, you can see that it doesn't line up. Uh, the pipe doesn't line up and it doesn't reach the uh, tank where it's supposed to. Not sure what happened there, um, but it doesn't work. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to fix it. I'll, I'll make it work somehow, but I'm unclear as to why this ended up not, it, I mean, it's not lined up at all. It's, it's way off. Let me go ahead and take the camera loose, show you a different angle. Okay, here we are on the side. I think you can see what I'm getting at. And that's with this thing moved all the way over as far to the port as I could get with these uh, little pipes right there. So we're going to have to figure something out. I don't know if I'm going to end up cutting this off and rerunning it. I'm not sure. Uh, I was a little bummed to see that. And then I realized I have parts, more parts from China 3D Prints. And here is their water tank. And it's down inside of there. No hole on the top. It's got the correct piping going out the side, but I can already tell you, see how far that sticks out, that when we put that on here, uh, it's, it's not going to work. Even that piece isn't going to line up. So I don't, I don't really know what happened there. But we'll, we'll, we'll do something that corrects that situation and makes it work right. Um, those of you who have done this before will notice, and we'll just take a quick look here. These all look really great. When you get back here, funnel number three has all of the pipe work going on. Um, I was reticent to share all this because I'm like, well, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but you, if I ran into it, you're going to run into it. So the piping that comes off of the funnel is fantastic. Uh, but, and as far as I could tell, it's accurate. I mean, it sure matches the pictures and everything uh, in the book, but the angle became a problem here. Now I was able to get the port side pretty straight, but what I was forced to do was cut up the kit supplied pipe uh, to make this run here and have the lines be straight. On the port side, I had to take some artistic license here. All of the pipe is supposed to run under this piece and come out over here. The kit supplied part works, but if you run it through uncut, it ends up not lining up with these two pipes over here on the right at all. And so I was forced to take some artistic license and bring them in at a slightly different angle to get them to work with the uh, the, the angle that I had, the piping is there, to make it look right because otherwise it's crooked. Uh, if I get straight down on it, you can see it's not perfectly lined up. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, I went on the Titanic 1 200th scale tips tricks building page uh, kind of where some of the stuff came from and I couldn't find anything on it in there I went in the resource post and everything and I didn't see anything I don't I thought in the past someone had brought this up 
Maybe they took the post down. I don't know. But regardless, uh, if – so this, this stuff is, is detailed correctly. I mean it's right. What may not work though is how it interacts with the kit pieces. And the angle may be correct off of the funnel for the real thing and then the trumpeter parts just incorrect, which is totally possible. But it doesn't matter uh, because I have this – part and I have to use these kit parts. I can't redesign all of this to make it work. So like I said, I had to I had to do some little modification of things to make it work. Now it looks great though, fortunately, uh from here. Everything's is exactly the way you want to see it and and so that's fine. Uh back funnel here looks great. No big problem there. This is the number four. So they're in position, they're glued on, they look good. Now we are getting underway. So um, I think that's all we're going to do right now on this episode. Let me get this full thing in view here. It's looking awesome. When we come back in the next one, what we're going to do is uh, start filling in all those details in between the funnels up there on the boat deck and the engineering areas and the, oh, what do we got? The domes for the staircases and everything. All that's got to be put together and we can do that and hopefully we'll be able to move along at a better pace unfortunately my work schedule has just gotten even more ridiculous I was supposed to have tomorrow off and now I found out I'm I got a trip that I got to do and uh, yeah I wasn't anticipating that so anyway that's it for now I hope you all enjoyed it feel free to post your questions and comments down below and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching we'll see you guys next time